In this video, we will continue our discussion about the steps of a risk assessment. In this part of the tutorial, we will talk about the actual process of going through a risk assessment. Most of this information will be taken from the NIST risk assessment process, NIST SP 800-30, the Risk Management Guide for Information Technology Systems. This document outlines nine steps when performing a risk assessment. The nine steps can be broken into two parts. The first parts have to do with gathering information about the system, existing vulnerabilities, and current controls. The second part, the remaining five, analyzes the information gathered and makes determinations about risk and how to mitigate them. The first step in the risk assessment is that of developing a system characterization. This step is extremely important. During this step, you define what the system is and what aspect of the system you will be assessing during the rest of the process. During this step, you will gather information about the system's hardware, software, system interfaces, data and information, people, system mission, use cases, and workflows. Basically, everything about the project you are working on and what is involved in that. The result of this work will be a good description of your project system with detailed information on all the pieces and parts that make up the system. This is crucial as you move through the remaining steps of the risk assessment. The first question that needs to be addressed is, what are you trying to protect? What is the value to your system? The list you come up with is the start of your asset list. Assets are what you are trying to protect. They are made up of items of value or sensitivity and could include people, data, software, and hardware like scientific instruments. Or they could be something intangible like your reputation. You might have sensitive data that you need to protect, like personal privacy information because of regulatory or compliance requirements. Gathering information about all your assets helps you to being able to identify which are the crucial pieces of your system that you are most concerned about protecting. Along with this, it is helpful to start thinking about which of these items has the most exposure and which are under the most threat from loss or damage. CTSC recommends taking an asset-based approach to risk management. Once you have established your list of assets, the remainder of the risk management begins to fall out from this list. You are able to focus on what the vulnerabilities are for each asset and what threats might affect it. The list of assets also helps in later prioritizing of your plan in that you know which assets are most important to you and need to be protected the soonest. Obvious examples of assets are the data you are collecting, systems and services that are provided, scientific instruments and equipment that is part of the project, your facilities, passwords and cryptographic keys, and any human subject data you might gather. While these are all obvious ones, you need to look beyond those and think about the less obvious ones too. Your image and reputation, your staff, and any special software or tools you create as part of your project. All of these things are assets that need to be identified. As we said, the risk assessment is looking at the things you are trying to protect from threats. Think about what it is that is most important to you in the project. What is it you are most worried about losing? And start there. Then build out the other assets that contribute to that item. The other important step in the system characterization is that of defining what it is you are actually looking at. Oftentimes, systems are made up of very big, complex pieces and parts. However, some of those might be out of your control. For example, if you are using something like Google Docs to collaborate on documents, while this would be something that makes up the system and is an asset, you need to ask yourself how much about that do you really need to assess? When you think about it, you really don't have a lot of control over Google Docs. You might need to think about what happens if someone deletes a document accidentally or intentionally, but beyond that, the system is out of your control. So really, you don't need to put a lot of effort into doing a risk assessment of Google. Are there sub-awardees that are part of this grant? How do they interact with you? 
Most likely, you should not include their facilities and systems in your risk assessment. They should be responsible for their own assessment. You might have to look at them as a black box and address the risk of their loss, but you do not need to go beyond that. It is through these kinds of decisions that you begin to define the boundaries of your system and your risk assessment. It is important that you define those boundaries well. Otherwise, you might quickly find ourselves going down a never-ending hole. You want to make sure you get all the important parts into your assessment. But most importantly, you want to make sure the assessment gets done. It would be easy to get lost in the endless details of a never-ending assessment and end up with no results. Once you have the boundaries defined to start thinking about how you interface with your system, how is the system used by the various stakeholders? What are the surfaces that the system presents that allow for attacks? Attack surfaces are the portions or components of an information system through which unauthorized access, use, disclosure, disruption, modification, or destruction of information assets may take place. With the earlier identification of assets, you should now be able to define the boundaries of your system. These two items of information are what you are really trying to understand with the system characterization. You should come away with a good understanding of what it is that is most important to you and what you are trying to protect, along with a well-defined and limited scope for the rest of the assessment project. In this video, we have looked at creating a system characterization as the first step in performing a risk assessment. If you would like more help with building a security system, please contact CTSC. You can get contact and other information on the CTSC website, trustedci.org. CTSC Online is made possible by funding from NSF, grant number OCI 1234408.